Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to look at uh, two functions in Excel for internal rate of return. So I had this question from a viewer, and they were asking about this formula, which looks like an IRR, internal rate of return formula. I don't know formulas that well. Uh, a billion years ago, I had to memorize some of those for a finance degree. Now I just rely on Excel. So let's see. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to use. So what we're going to do here in Excel, let me go ahead and zoom in. Oops, let me zoom in a bit more. And right up here, I'm going to just go ahead and put in some cash flows. So the internal rate of return is basically going to be the return rate for an investment that has a series of uh, income, series of cash flow payments. And I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to put in year zero, year one, and we'll continue this out. Now this can work for a big project, but I'm gonna pretend we got a little project. Let's say there's a little project that requires a $4,000 investment. So I'm doing a negative $4,000. And because of this investment, we should expect some return, some cash flow from it. So we'll start off in the first year of just 350 bucks. But then it starts to build up a little bit. In the second year, maybe we get $550. I'm gonna select both of those and auto fill it down. So by the time we're getting to year seven, it's 1550. Maybe it starts to wane a little bit though. Maybe after year seven, instead of 1550, it drops down to like 1200 and we're approaching the end of the life of this project or whatever it happens to be. So I've got an investment and I've got a cash flow. Now the cash flows are gonna total 7850. So we know we're gonna at least make back our investment, but what's the internal rate of return? Off to the side here, the IRR, internal rate of return, it's gonna be equal to the IRR function. And look how simple this function is. All I need to do is give Excel the values. So I'm gonna select the values, including that initial negative value, that's the investment amount, comma. Now it's got this optional parameter here called guess. Basically the IRR functions, they, uh, they guess. They, uh, they just try different scenarios, going higher, lower, higher, lower, until it gets to the most accurate one. The guess is an optional value that you can put in that helps Excel out a little bit by giving it a starting point and then it just gets to that target faster. If I put in something like 0.1 or 10%, it's not going to have much impact because this is such a simple uh, little example here. But that's what that guess is. And in fact, you don't even have to put the guess in. I'm going to press enter and my rate of return is 14%. Let's show a couple extra decimal places. All right, 14.3%. All right, it's pretty good, pretty good return, right? So um, yeah, so the initial investment is four grand. We get a series of cash flows over eight years and total rate of return 14.3%. Now the IRR function is assuming very steady payment periods, okay? So this is over an eight year period. Now there's also the XIRR function, which is good if the payment periods are a little bit varied, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is let's go ahead and put some dates next to this. Let's assume I make this investment. Let's see, it's March 19th right now. Let's assume I make this investment on end of the fiscal year, June 30th of 21. Make that a little wider. And then we'll do these by years first, just so we can see the comparison. So June 30th, 22. And there we go. So there's our years, but this isn't going to change anything. Equals XIRR. You'll notice there's an extra parameter here for dates. The values is the same. My investments, my initial investment, including my cash flows. And then we can select the range of cells that make the dates. And then we can put a guess in if we want. I'm not going to do a guess this time. Closing parentheses, enter. 0.14297, if I style that as a percent and show a couple of decimal places, oh, you're gonna see we get the exact same or very close to the exact same as what we have for the IRR. That's because my years here are of equal, equal time periods, equal payment periods. And that's what the default IRR is, is assuming. Now, what if this wasn't every year? What if my, my first cash flow was like 9.30, 21? three months later. So I'm getting a little bit of cash earlier than I expected in my original plan. So that gives me a higher internal rate of return, even though the numbers haven't changed, or at least the, uh, the money hasn't changed. What if this whole investment project 
gets a payment every three years. So basically, it starts off in the summer of 2021 and finishes in the summer of 23. Well, look at that. Now the internal rate of return goes up to almost 71% because we're getting this cash flow over a shorter period of time. So definitely pretty cool. Is there any reason to use the IRR function? No, not really. Uh, you could just use the uh, X IRR function. Let me just press control left accent so we can see those side by side. Yeah, so there we go. There's uh, our two internal rates of return functions in Excel. Thanks for hanging out with me.